This morning, you all know, is the fifth Sunday after Pascha. And we read the story of the Lord Jesus' encounter with a Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. There is so much in this morning's Gospel reading, it's hard to know where to begin. But we're going to talk about three basic things. Uh, first of all, this well, Jacob's well, is actually spoken of for the first time in the book of Genesis. The very first book of the Bible in the 29th chapter. It's the place where Jacob, who is the grandson of Abraham, meets his future wife, Rachel. This well existed 1,700 years before Christ encountered the Samaritan woman there. So this well is 2,700 years old. And this site, the very spot where the King of Kings and Lord of Lords met the Samaritan woman and asked her for a drink of water, that very site still exists today and is a site of pilgrimage for Christians, but it's also revered by Jews and Muslims as well. It's a real place. And those who went with me on pilgrimage exactly 10 years ago this month drew water from this well, were splashed with water from this well as a special blessing, and even drank water from this well, just as the Lord Jesus did. In fact, since I see you sitting there, Wayne, I remember you being particularly wet all over uh, with water from that well. Uh, he was drenched. It was really fun for me to do and watch. At any rate, today, one of the largest Greek Orthodox churches in the Holy Land is built over and around this well, a church that's probably twice the size of St. Paul's. The altar area up here is actually built over the well. And so one goes down a flight of steps that are placed on the solea in order to go down to where the well itself is. Now, again, I bring all this stuff up to you time after time to constantly remind you that the places discussed in the Bible are real, that we can still visit them today, that these are not fairy tales, but they are real history. So that's the first thing. The second thing, the Lord Jesus encountered this woman, Samaritan woman, who's come to draw water from the well on this very hot day in the afternoon, the late afternoon. Now it's repeated over and over again by John the Evangelist in telling this story that she was a Samaritan. And you have to understand something about Samaritans in order to, stand, to understand the full implications of this story. Samaritans, and I know you know this because we've discussed this many times, were absolutely hated by the Jewish people at the time of Jesus. Why? Well, there were two basic reasons. First, the Samaritans were ethnically different from the Jewish people. When the kingdom of Israel had fallen to the Babylonians some 600 years before Christ, and the majority of the Jewish population was deported to Babylon, New peoples were brought in to replace the Jewish population in exile, and the Samaritans were the descendants of these peoples and the remnant of the Jewish people still left in Israel. And the second reason they were hated is because the Samaritans were not only ethnically different, but they were religiously different. They were considered heretics by devout Jews. Samaritans didn't worship at the temple in Jerusalem. They had their own temple, in Samaria. In fact, if you listen carefully to the conversation today between Jesus and the Samaritan woman, she says point blank that Jews will not even drink water from the same cup as a Samaritan. Now, I've told you this before, but I want to reiterate it many, many times, especially now at this time in our country's history. So as a kid visiting relatives in Kentucky in the summers, I can still remember white drinking fountains and black drinking fountains. Jews and Samaritans in the first century, whites and blacks in 20th century America. Things are not so different even in more recent American history. But the Lord Jesus, you have to understand, is here breaking down the barrier that existed between Jews and Samaritans by speaking to a Samaritan woman and asking her for a drink of water and being willing to drink from the same cup that she touched. 
So let me be clear. For Orthodox Christians, there can be no racism. There is no racism in Orthodoxy. There can be no bigotry in Orthodoxy. In Christ, St. Paul writes in his letter to the Galatians, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male and female. The church, as Christ's own body, is open to everyone. Peoples of all backgrounds, all cultures, all races. The book of Revelation describes all those who have gathered before the throne of the Lamb to worship him. And John tells us that, I looked and I saw a multitude of people too large to count from every nation, every tribe, every people and language. And they all cried out at once, salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb. Now, notice also, if you listen carefully to the gospel this morning, that Jesus says something else which is important for us to remember in this encounter. He says, salvation is from the Jews. Salvation is from the Jews, he said. So the Lord Jesus was a Jew. The Theotokos was a Jew. The apostles, the twelve, as well as the Apostle Paul, were all Jews. There is no room for anti-Semitism in Orthodoxy either. So we need to be clear about these things, especially in America now. Third, and finally, let's talk a little bit about the Samaritan woman herself. So being a Samaritan, she knows what it means to be hated. But if you recall, she's also screwed up her life. Jesus confronts her with the facts of her life. She's already been through five husbands, and the man she's currently with isn't even her husband. Jesus could see right through her. Can you imagine what that must have felt like? He could see into her life without her ever saying a word. And when he does so, it turns her life around. She becomes, in effect, an evangelist for Jesus. She runs to the village that she's from, and she starts telling everybody about Jesus. She starts telling people, can this be the Messiah? She asks the question. Now, in some ways, it's a rhetorical question because the Lord Jesus has made it very clear. She's been talking about the Messiah coming, and Jesus says, point blank, I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. So he is the Messiah that everyone has been waiting for, both Jews and Samaritans. And we know from the tradition of our church that this Samaritan woman, who's lived a broken life to this point, is called Saint Fotini in Greek, the Enlightened One. And in Russian, that name becomes Svetlana. And in Ireland, it becomes Fiona. And Claire, in other Western European languages. All names having to do with light, because she has seen Jesus, who is the light of the world, and recognized him for who he is, and cannot stop telling people about him. That's a good witness for us. Having met the Lord Jesus, she becomes a light shining into a dark world. In a world of darkness and tragedy held captive by idols and lies, just like the world we live in today, she becomes a word of truth, a sign of hope, and a witness to the love of Christ that breaks down all barriers between people. In the tradition of the church, we know that she, as well as her two sons and her five sisters, are all executed for their faith in Christ during the persecution that was initiated by the Roman Emperor Nero. And she is remembered in our hymns as a martyr who is called equal to the apostles because of, of her preaching the good news of Christ crucified and risen from the dead. Christos Anesti, everyone. What a good day it is to see so many of you here. God bless you.